This is about things that I did wrong. Wrong in learning meditation, that is. Otherwise, it might take a book or two. Here are just a few of the many things that I didn't get right. It, and it has to be a little bit humorous, otherwise it, it would be too depressing. One thing I did wrong way back in the 1960s was to spontaneously make up my own idea of what meditation is. I mean, everyone else I knew seemed to be doing it. Same thing. We all had our own idea of meditation, and these ideas were, were all over the board. No one knew what I did in the privacy of my meditation, sadly, probably including me. And it was only later that I found out that most of us didn't know what we were doing, but we each thought that everyone else did, and we wanted to keep up with the Joneses. Now, how common is that? I think it's pretty common. It was only when I began meeting the actual Zen and Tibetan Buddhist teachers that I cleaned up my act, like when I realized that these folks actually had a consistent idea and a method as to what meditation was. I kind of stopped trotting out my own version of meditation and was forced to take a second look at what I was doing, which really was pretending to meditate. My own private and supposedly ingenious ideas on meditation didn't last very long around the real thing, around real meditators. They knew what they were talking about, but I did not. Trying too hard. Another thing that I've lived to regret was trying to go along with the popular idea back then that you really had to meditate for long, long periods of time, you know, until it hurts. You know the old phrase, no pain, no gain, was that approach. The pain of effort was supposedly good for us, I was told. And as mentioned, this this approach was all the rage back in the early 1970s. But not with me it wasn't. All that pushing too hard, all that did was make me not like meditation, and subconsciously at least try to avoid meditation as much as I could and still look myself in the mirror, still be a, quote, new age person. I liked the idea of being a Dharma person, and so I tried to keep my hand in, but pinching myself has never been my idea of a good time. One of my worst habits was to actually believe my own bullshit. In the beginning, after sitting for a short time, I promptly labeled to myself at least that what I was doing, I was meditating. I'm a meditator now. I meditate. Everyone else I knew did the same thing. People seldom talked about what we actually did in meditation. It was a little like the confessional of my Catholic upbringing, you know, secret. In truth, mostly I was sitting there waiting until the time I had set to sit expired. All too often I was waiting to get out, to get out of there and on with the rest of my day. Sure, I, I have heartily tried to learn the basic technique, but mostly I was daydreaming, totally lost in one thought or another. I even knew this was what I was doing, but somehow thought that a little bit of meditation, whatever that was, somehow would rub off from me if I just sat there long enough. Never much ever did. Mainly this was because I did not really know how to meditate or what kind of effort, how hard to try that, that it took. What I was supposed to be experiencing, i.e. meditation, was an unknown for me. I had no real idea or experience what it was. And my own feeble efforts seemed kind of lost in the expanse of daydreaming that went on. I was just sitting there, kind of looking around and waiting until the meter expired. When Buddhists use the term, quote, turning the wheel of the Dharma, end quote, they refer to the activity of the Buddha. But the Buddha pointed out that we each, each of us also has to turn it for ourselves. It's not like my Catholic upbringing where 
supposedly Jesus could touch me on the forehead and some miracle might happen, I, I would be saved, enlightened, or whatever that touch does. Buddha makes it clear that no one will ever just show up and enlighten us. Not only will we wait forever, but Buddhists claim that we've already waited forever, that we are the last ones, the stragglers. Enlightenment is a do-it-yourself project, and someday we each have to enlighten ourselves. I mean, that's the whole point. The Buddha pointed out to all of us just how we can enlighten ourselves. You know, he gave us the method. That's what's called the Dharma. The Dharma is a path that someday we each have to enter, and it's not just a zap on the forehead. We can sit there on our cushion forever, daydreaming, and apparently uh, that's what I was doing for many years, and nothing, nothing's going to happen. Now, that was a tough concept for me to get my mind around. I kind of liked delinquently sitting there, hoping I would get enlightened or, or something or someone, you know, somehow struck by enlightenment, you know, that would just spontaneously happen. But no such luck. Uh, and this was really the old, quote, the world owes me a living, end quote, syndrome that's still so popular with young people. For me, and it's true for all of us, sooner or later, it's a case of pick up your bed, Lazarus, and walk. Someday, I actually had to get serious enough to practice the Dharma for real and in earnest, which I didn't know how to do. And I had to do it by myself because I wanted to do it. So I sat there for a very long time, decades maybe, waiting for something to happen for someone to save me, to enlighten me from the outside. You know, this went on for like 30 years. Imagine that. And it must be some kind of record. I bet few, if any of you reading this, have sat that long and come up with so little results. Well, I did that. Maybe I can get in the Guinness Book of World Records. That's how much of a quick learner I am. And I first had to admit that I knew nothing about meditation, and back in the 1970s, that was not such a cool thing to do.